How many times in the last month have you sat down to do a hard thing and found yourself doing just about anything else? That's not laziness, that's procrastination. I'm Amanda Brem. I've been coaching students on their MCAT journey since 2019. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about why you might be procrastinating. There are four main reasons and how we can overcome each of those reasons if they pertain to you. So let's get started with reason number one, time or energy constraints. That simply means that you have put too much on your plate. You've decided to start studying for the MCAT, but you also have a full-time job and are taking classes and volunteering. Now, this doesn't always mean literal time. You may have the physical hours in a day, but do you have the capacity? Do you have the energy to actually sit down and learn new things that are really challenging? If the answer is no, no wonder you're procrastinating. So step one for fixing this problem is to dial it back to be more reasonable with your schedule and your energy. Maybe you've been trying to study for the MCAT after work and your brain is exhausted after work. So what's a fix for that? I know it's not always the most fun, but for a lot of my full-time workers, we found the most effective way to avoid that end of day procrastination is to not put studying at the end of the day and instead to put it early where there are less distractions and more brain capacity to get the work done. The other issue with time and energy constraints may be your obligations, both at home, at work, or at school. So check in with the people that are asking things of you and say, hey, I need these hours to be safe hours for MCAT prep. I need this morning every week to dedicate to doing a practice section. You'll feel motivated to do that work because you know it's a safe time and space to get things done and you won't feel the need to distract yourself or be distracted by things coming in. Number two, fear. This one's a big one and it's a real one. You may be procrastinating and it may not be procrastinating in the typical sense. I bet some of you are definitely studying for the MCAT, maybe watching my video right now, but you're doing everything but that really hard subject. That's fear procrastination. That's you knowing that this is gonna be a hard thing. I see this happen with students a lot who want to start studying for the MCAT and can't make themselves take a practice exam. And what that tells me is we're afraid. That's okay. It's okay to be afraid or a little nervous about the outcome. You gotta do it anyway. That fear is holding you back from learning what you need to improve on. And if you're avoiding that one subject, it's never going away. It's staying on the MCAT. So my solution for the fear-based procrastination, A, acknowledge that it's happening. Sit with that for a minute. Accept it. I'm not studying. I'm not taking that practice exam. I'm not studying organic chemistry because I'm a little scared. Okay, do it anyway. Do it scared. I promise you it's not as bad as your brain's making it out to be. And once you get over that initial hump, Every student I talk to is like, wow, now that I've taken a practice exam, I know what to do. I know what to improve on. I know how to get better. Start by doing it scared, and then your body will realize, huh, this is not so bad. We're not being chased by a lion. It's just a test. So maybe at this point, you're like, man, none of this is resonating so far. I have plenty of time. I have plenty of capacity. I'm not afraid. Why am I procrastinating? Well, reason three, you have set yourself ridiculously unattainable or uncontrollable goals. When I was a personal trainer, I would occasionally have clients come in and say, hey, Amanda, I want to lose 30 pounds next month because I have a wedding coming up. That is both a unattainable for most people and uncontrollable goal. Similarly, if you have a goal score in mind and every day you're like, I need to get to that goal score, that goal score is not entirely in your control. I hate to break it to you. We can't go into test day and guarantee the outcome. It's a scaled test, it's a performance, a lot can happen. And sometimes we're happily surprised and sometimes we're not. But the point is, is we can't control it with 100% accuracy. So if you're fixating every day on your goal score, that is very demotivating for most people. It may spark that encouragement early on in your prep, but as you get closer and closer to test day, it may cause you to stop studying rather than study harder. So what do we do with this? Well, we set our goal, you have a goal score, it's important to know where you're trying to go, but then you kind of forget about it during your studying, during your prep, and instead focus on setting yourself some goals that are entirely in your control. Let's go back to my client who wanted to lose 30 pounds. We reset those goals. I said, okay, I'll write that down, but how are we gonna get there? Let's start by getting into the gym four days a week. 
That's an attainable and controllable goal. Similarly for you all, that could be studying two hours a day, doing 50 practice questions a day. That is a controllable goal. You can set that out and do that, especially if you give yourself a little buffer time. Super attainable, super in your control. Putting yourself in a position where you're only focused on your controllable outcomes will keep you motivated throughout the process. And guess what? That procrastination will go away because you're seeing that you're achieving your goals. And if you do that week over week over week, you'll get to that outcome goal. Okay. Say, so Amanda, that may be all true. Maybe sometimes that happens, but I have the time. I have the capacity. I'm not afraid. And I've set realistic goals. I'm still doing anything but MCAT prep. What is wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. What that means is that you have a misalignment of purpose. Now, I don't mean that means you don't want to be a doctor. Don't worry. What it means is that the work you're doing in this moment for MCAT prep or your school or your application, whatever it is, does not emotionally or mentally align with you and your goals for the future. I especially see this in my pre-medical students who want to go to medical school, for lack of a better phrasing, to help people. And studying for the MCAT is an inherently selfish process. That can feel not good, right? I'm sitting here studying instead of helping my family member. I'm sitting here studying instead of being of service in my community. No wonder you're procrastinating. No wonder you're avoiding doing that work. It sounds terrible. So how do we fix this? First, go back to your deep why. Why do I want to be a physician? Why do I want to go into healthcare? Is that still super meaningful to me? If you do go back to your deep why and you're like, yes, this is what I want to do, find a way to connect your MCAT prep. Find a way to connect your studies to your deeper values. One of the students I worked with many years ago now, he's now an M4, he told me, he's like, I mean, I don't want to study. I'm so sick of this test. I think it's stupid. I think it's not helping me get to my goals. And I said, well, why? He's like, well, I want to be of service. And one of my core values is gratitude and giving back. And nothing about this MCAT is giving back or gratitude. It's all about just me learning random facts for this test. So we talked about it. We went back and forth and we found that he did have a genuine curiosity for science. He was interested and wanted to learn more and found some of the CARS passages even interesting, especially the ones about population health. So we decided to look at the MCAT as a gratitude practice. How wonderful is it to have the privilege and luxury to study as much as we want, to learn as much science as possible, to read all these different things? And even if not, how great is it that we're learning how to study so well and so efficiently and so effectively that by the time he got to medical school, he was able to study well without stress and was able to focus his extra time and energy on serving his community as a medical student and now going into residency. One more final note is that procrastination is not burnout. Burnout is exhaustion. It's purely, I don't have the energy to do anything, let alone do these practice problems. Procrastination is, I would rather do anything else, but I have the energy to do those other things. If you're experiencing burnout rather than procrastination, the only cure is rest. So check in. Am I experiencing procrastination? Use the tools from this video. Am I experiencing burnout? I gotta take a day off and come back the next day and see if I feel better. I hope this video re-inspires you a bit. Remember that procrastination is not a sign of your skill or ability. It's a symptom of something deeper going on that you should and need to address before moving forward. I'm Amanda Brem. I've been coaching students on their MCAT journey since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content and mental fitness strategies. And as always, happy studying.